around the time that we got started, um, all that was going on in Portland were the like Indian student parties. So that mm-hmm. they would happen like a PSU it would be the Indian Student Association. And when I discovered the music, I was so excited. It was like, I want to go to a party where they play this music. And it was much more about an exclusive social space for South Asians. It wasn't so much about the music. In fact, a lot of the kids would rather hear hip hop and top 40 R&B, that sort of thing. So the first one I went to, there wasn't even one Indian song played. Like the audience was 100% Indian except for me, Mm -hmm. but that wasn't the music that was played. Um, And so I was like, well, that's really unfortunate. And so there were, you know, these sort of student parties that would happen, but there was nothing going on in the clubs. Um, There was nothing going on outside of these sort of exclusive spaces that the students would create for themselves. And we were the first people that were like, well, we're going to take this music out of the community. Not that we wanted to exclude the community, but it was more like we want to invite everyone to hear this because they're going to be blown away because I was, you know, I didn't even hear Indian classical music until probably in my 20s. I certainly, you know, I, I would have been in my mid to late 20s before I heard old Bollywood records, um, and I never heard Bhangra until she played it. Um, it was something that I'd been aware of because I read so much about music, I knew it was out there, but I'd never heard it before. Um, so I, I, you know, knew that people with no history of, um, you know, with India or Indian culture would hear this music and be blown away. So it was like, yeah, let's get it out there. And, and so she had come back from New York and had experienced these parties. When we started throwing Bunger parties, Bollywood parties, I had never experienced anything like it. I was sort of winging it. I'm on stage like, ah, I think this song's a big hit. I think they'll like this, you know, we'll see how it goes. Um, so it was a really exciting I mean, I think we were both time. winging it in a way. Well, you'd at least been in New York and seen Daisy parties, and you know you'd had some sense of like, you know, this DJ plays this, and people either like it or they don't or whatever. But I was just like, well, I don't know what I'm doing. But do you think your audience had any experience or idea of what to expect? Weddings, you know, Indian weddings. Yeah, okay. So um, some of the Indian and maybe goers. Maybe the two like Punjabi guys that were there. You know what I mean? <laughs> and so this is. It wasn't pre-internet, but it was the very early days of the internet, so it wasn't like you could go and download music or even order music, so we would go to the Indian grocery stores, that's how we would find their CDs that we would play, and because most of the music we play is either from England, Scotland, or India, we would have to rely on these remix CDs that were made by like Indian American bedroom DJs. So maybe they would go to India, they'd get the original songs, and then they'd come home and they would make these, most of them were pretty awful, like remix Mm -hmm. CDs, where they would just like take an awful house beat or techno beat or just a dull instrumental, the dull is the drum, yeah, and they would just like try to like lay it over the original song, and most of it was awful, and so, I mean, Stephen literally spent I don't even know how many thousands of dollars on all like tons of CDs I was much more selective like well I'll buy a few but we would like sift through all this stuff and try and find you know the stuff that we liked and that's kind of how we schooled ourselves on Punjabi folk music we're like oh you know put the jatande okay that's like a standard like it seems like every artist does a version of that you know what i mean it was you see which songs got remixed over and over and over and realize oh okay that's kind of an anthem and because my mom's not punjabi it wasn't something i grew up with um <laughs> <laughs> you be in the interview for i think so <laughs> so we kind of had to figure it out on our own um and you know i grew up listening to hindi Hindi spoken and Hindi music and not Punjabi music, so it's definitely like familiar to me, but not not native, not native at all. Yeah.